So today we got our board done. We just quickly off camera drilled the holes we needed for it, but uh, and we'll put the chassis or the, that back in the chassis later. But we now need to prep the chassis. So she's going to go ahead and uh, mount the output transformer in here. That it came with the power transformer you mounted, as you possibly saw. And then she's going to wire up or hook up the sockets, hook up the uh, potentiometers, light, all that kind of stuff on the front, and hook in the power switch. And then we're going to solder all of that into the into and tie things together with the heaters and the main power stuff before we drop the board in and connect it up to the parts. So, uh, so that's where we're going to start now. Go ahead, start putting these in. So talk through what I talked through with you so you can explain to people what you're doing. Well, I'm putting, if I understand correctly, these gaskets in these holes. So when we put in the output, and that's me getting a text, the output transformer in, the wires come through and this protects the wires. Yep. Just a little bit of rubber between the wires and the metal so that it doesn't get shredded over time. And I realize she's probably better at doing these amps too because my big fat hands don't fit in there very well. I get frustrated quickly. <laughs> There we go. All right. So and now my understanding is we want to have this this way, which is the opposite way of this. Is that right? Or does that matter? So we were, what I was talking to you about is there's two parts of the transformer, the primary and the secondary hmm. primary is this side. And that's where the um, output tube connects in. Okay. One end goes to the output tube. The other one goes to, I think it's high, the high voltage or the ground. I can't remember. We'll look at this at the schematic to double check. It's a little different than the push pull ones I'm used to. Okay. In a push pull transformer, you put one end of that each to the two different halves of the power tube sides. But in this case, this is going to still go to the output tube and that runs power through from the output of the tube into the other side to the secondary. The secondary has black for ground and then it has two other ohm taps. We're going to just choose, I think, the eight ohm tap and we'll kind of put away the yellow one. Uh, but the, I think the yellow one, I'll double check, is the is uh, a four ohm. And then the green one is an 8 ohm, it's the standards I remember generally, but those can be different, so you have to watch that. But So effectively we want to put the power tube, this power side close to the power tube, and we want this output side close to the output um, jack that will go right there. So Isn't there something with having the different power transformers not lined up the same way? Yes, you also, and what we'll do is probably once you've got this assembled, we'll take this off of that for a second, we can show that to people. You want the laminations of the transformers kind of always uh, like 180 degrees or I guess that would be is it 90 degrees 90 degrees out of phase with each other so if uh, one transformer was say you can see the main core running this way the other one would be this way so that they're opposing each other because that way they cancel each other's fields instead of magnifying them if you have them the wrong way you'll get a decent amount of hum because of the transformers being next to each other and in phase Okay, so now oh, you're I, pulling I too tight. Too tight yep. didn't I? Okay. Yeah, you want to be able to move this guy down. So I, what I would say is just get that first hole in, and once that's in, then you can adjust into the second hole as well. So grab a screw, mm -hmm. put it through, grab a nut. In fact, I'll hold this still for you. This is one of those things that having two people is actually nicer. And you don't have to get that super tight to hold it still enough until we get it in. All right, and now it should hold itself in place pretty much. All right, and now I'm looking at that. I hope we may have to reverse that. Another thing about it. let's stop okay. for a second, because the 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 um, the only standoff we have is this tall, and that's barely taller than that. That's what I was and we could potentially to. touch uh, wires. So what we want to do is just undo that one and flip it around, because I think the screw head will be smaller yeah. and better recessed for the the board to sit on top of that and not touch it. All right. Do you want to do that with both of them, or do you think the other one is going to be okay? Um, we want to do that with both of them, just to be safe. Okay. That way, we're not going to accidentally touch the bottom of the, of the uh, turrets. Right. Alright, All right, so now what we want to do is we'll quickly remove it. Hold, hold on to this and make them move the whole thing. There you go. So let's turn that around, and we're going to talk about that that you just mentioned. So, if you look, this thing looks just like this thing, but it's rotated upwards and then turned kind of out of, so this side here and this part here are turned sideways from that guy. They're also a good amount of separation as well. So they'll cancel each other's fields out instead of reinforcing them. 
If for some reason we feel like we're getting too much noise, we may need to kind of adjust this guy, and move it over this way a little bit or something, but we'd have to figure that out at that point. So, but I think we're fine. So we'll just go ahead and put this back in here. All right. So now what we need to do is mount in the sockets and all this stuff. So what we'll do is we'll grab, there's the bag of that stuff. Here's some of it. And here are our sockets. And there's a bunch of the screws and things here. So, so now we're going to hook up the two input jacks here and the output jack. It's the first thing she's got. Oh, uh, he does a very good job. D Doug is super fast with his shipping and he's very, very good about his packaging, which means it's also kind of a pain in the butt to get open. But <laughs> that way you don't lose anything. All right. So. I will quickly cover for her and for you guys' sake. These guys come with uh, a washer and a, of course my fingernails are too short to pick them up, there you go. They have a, wa a washer that helps keep it nice and tight and then the nut and this. So you effectively will put this through the chassis and you need to drill a hole normally that's the size of this. There's a small, I don't know if we can see that, but there's a small lip there. That's what you want the hole to go through so that that fits flash, flush. You drop this in and then screw that down on top. So we're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and start fitting those now. Okay. And the, these, oh, sorry. Shiznits, my bad. It's okay. Actually, we need to look at them quickly too, because one of these I think is going to be a, I'll be right back. oh no, they're We were looking at these. Yep. All right. All right. So basically the one thing I wanted to check, sorry, we had to take a quick cut there. Um, these are all actually the nicer quality switched jacks and, and the, what that means is there's the switch is this little tab when you insert a jack into it it, it creates pressure and pulls that away and now there's no longer contact but in the meantime that jack tip connects to one of these tabs i don't remember off the top of my head which one it is but i always check with continuity uh, and that allows you to ground it out when it's not in use so this you know will go into ground but you can also use it so that that would be connected to another jack in theory and i think that's the way we're going to set these guys up so that when one is running, it works through the other one as well, okay. et cetera. So, but then for the output side, for the speaker, we just are gonna connect this and we'll ground it all out. Um, so this will go into the speaker output side here for the output jack, so. Okay. So all we need to do right now so is, is connect one of these guys. That washer goes on the outside, not outside? the inside. Yep. Okay. We're gonna connect the speaker one in. And the best way I've found is with those tabs kind of upward so you can see them and access them when you're soldering stuff in. So just kind of point it so that all three of them are mostly facing upward. And this is probably not super visible to you guys, but that's okay. I pretty figure out how to use a threaded nut. And just kind of get it finger tight for now. We'll, we'll get some of the tight in a bit. Um, so another thing, one of the things that I've showed as a trick before that I like to do on these, I actually mount them this way at first, solder them up, and then you can just pull them out, turn it around and put them back in again so that you don't have to try and um, solder inside of here to connect those up because it can be a real pain in the butt. So what we'll do now is we'll actually turn on the soldering iron, we'll take a break and solder those together with the everything we need on the outside and we'll get that set up and come back for that after the break. Okay, so we're gonna hook those up. We just kind of talked it through and I'll explain it in general while she's connecting things. We have two inputs. Uh, you know, if you look at the schematic in the bottom left corner of the kind of main layout diagram, They'll have inputs one and two and how you wire them. And she's gonna try and put these on the outside in a way that makes that make sense. So it, uh, jack two has the ground point at the ground, but since we're uh, reversed pretty much from the way we'll be putting it in, she's just gonna put it where the ground, which is this tip here, or this, this connection here is up. And then she will be tightening that down a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. It's funny, I swear those things do have a harder time going on one way than the other. Mm -hmm. And then she's gonna put the other one in, but she's gonna to wanna to connect the switched side of input two, which is the center one here, to the tip side of input one. So the tip side is going to be this one right here that's not, remember we talked about the ground is the one right. that you can see the metal ring the around ground. the top as well. Right, so that's why this one on this one, we have it up on mm -hmm. number two, because yep. when we flip it, it's gonna be at the bottom. Yep, and it doesn't matter too much, we just, we're trying to keep that in our head. So, now this guy you'll rotate around a little bit and what we'll end up doing is jumper in between those two. So we just need to now put the washer and the nut to tighten that down. And we'll connect them together and then those will be ready to go in the other direction. So this was a tip, I can't remember who, somebody on one of the EL34 World forums or maybe even a video I saw 
but this is a very easy way to solder in these jacks and not be fighting the inside of the chassis and they will also be perfectly spaced for you. Then you just, once you're done soldering, unscrew those, put them inside and, and tighten them back in. Oh, did we ever find the five meg? One meg? Or one meg, sorry. They're one of these three. So two of these will be the 68K, one is the one meg, and the other one is one that goes on the power tube and I think it's like a 220K. So... Should I test these? No, it's all right. Let's test them really quickly now. All right, so I go to continue. Not continuity. We want ohms, which is ohms. the one that looks like a horseshoe. Okay. All right. And then you have those three scissors here. I will actually turn this up. I'm going to see if that's visible on the screen. You should be able to also see that as well. It looks like it is. I don't know. If it's, I think it's in focus too, but. Uh, such All right. Clumsy fingers. So that's a 60, oh, yeah, that's a 68K. So put, no, don't put it away, put it right here. Cause that's one of the other two we need to use for the right. inputs. But this is the we first one to do the 1.5 or the one meg that will connect between. There's the one meg. Okay. So the one meg, let's go ahead and set these down for a minute. No, well, we know the, one of the 68Ks is which okay. is fine. But so the one meg, if you look on the picture, it goes between ground and the tip. So uh, one, I would, what I like to do generally is, uh, well, it's going to go on this one over here. I want to, con you want to oh, connect it between yep, the switch and ground uh, on this guy, which will be this one this and this one. one, these two. So stick it into the um, ground side and then run that same thing. And I sometimes need a little bit of the pliers to do this as well. Do I need to do it from this end and yes. I'm going to be bending it over? You're going to stick this through both of these. Mm -hmm. And I usually, here, I'll let you do it, but I usually get those pliers because I need to bend it a little bit to get it to go through that second hole. Push it pretty much all the way through until it's almost, you know, the other end. There you go. Now, now bend that down so that we're, and bend both ends basically, because you want to kind of lock that in place so it's not going to, you, you, oh, I don't you can just, okay. I'm let me, afraid that I'm going to bend it right at the thing instead of. You want this bent all the way down like that. Yeah. And you want this one bent all the way around because it's going to okay. come up and connect into. I, I can't remember what's up my head, but one of those. So what we'll do, we can let that kind of stop shaking in a minute, but you want to make sure for this one meg to ground that you get a good physical connection both here mm -hmm. and we will solder that in and then we'll solder that as well. So let's go ahead and turn the soldering iron on. Are we doing that now? Yeah, we're going to do that now because okay. we have to solder all this together. So just, I would say, do this one first okay. and then do that one. And what you want to do with these, the same kind of thing you've done before, but we want the time not to be too long near that resistor side. But do this one first and get the, the tip kind of underneath like this so that you can put the solder from the top and make sure the solder fills over that whole kind of rounded end so that it fills the hole in well. All right. Okay. I might be blocking the camera when I do this, but I'll try and do it from this side. Okay. Yeah, that's why these are one of those times where I usually use my left hand. You don't have to be super steady with your left hand. You're pushing upwards on a piece of metal. So. How long do I get to fill this stinking hole? It takes a decent amount, but I think you got it there. So then, once that, we want to kind of let that cool, then you can do the second hole. Alright. And I think that might be enough for it to have been hardened. Does it look nice and shiny still too? I think so. Okay, so go ahead and hit that second one now. And this one, I would almost say put the tip on the top and try and put the solder flow from the bottom so that your tip is not too close to the actual resistor. Okay. The resistors are less prone, I think, to the heat problems than capacitors, but you still want to try not to leave the heat around something like a resistor for too long. You can still kind of bring the soldering from the top side. You just need it. You want to really feed in a lot fast. There you go. I think that did a really good job too. So what we can do is snip off that little bit once it's hardened up a little bit. Okay. Not fan for now, or no? We're going to continue soldering in a second. We need to hook up oh. the two sixty-eight K resistors. So what I want okay. you to do. Um, So now what you want to do is find the other 68K resistor and we'll, what you do is you, you will wind the two ends of the 68K resistors together 
of the one in the 68. Yep, and we'll put a little bit of solder on that as well, just to kind of hold it in place. Okay. And I'll show you a trick on that as well. So you have to first find the other 68. Okay, I'll hold that one for a minute. Oh, we're going to do the two. You have to solder the two of them okay. together on one nice. end, and then the other end, one goes into the center with this. One end of, the, of these, one of them will go into the, this joint one here together with the one, one meg. It's a one. That's a 1.5 1. meg, or 1.5 km. That's the one that will go on the power tube. So that one most likely is your 68K. 68, 68, but Should I'm going to check anyway. Yep. All right, Okay. 68. So grab these two ends. doesn't matter which way. If you want to be anal and make sure the colors line up nice and pretty, do that. Right. Hold them together and then twist the end really, no, 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 oh. that way. This if you look at this picture, it shows it done the same way. The two connect together I at the see. end and go off. All right. So we're going to hook up some shielded wire to this end and take that over the tube under the bottom, or to the, yeah, to the, the preamp tube. But we'll put a little solder on that as well um, later. But as long as it's nice and tight now, it's okay. Ah. Yeah, the, the end of those can be a little sharp. My fingers are callous enough. But all right, so the, if you look now, one half of that just goes into the tip of... you got to go upside down. It yes, going it's going to go into the tip of two. This one. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. And then the other one goes into the center post between both of these with this guy as well. Okay. So what I usually will do is is um, get the turn this off. Okay. So I will get the the pliers, mm -hmm. and I will take this guy and hoop it through those two, kind of up through the middle. All right. Uh, kind of carefully set this guy like that. Bring that up through, and you don't want it touching other things, but you want to bring it through those two. And then kind of bring it up and tighten it off, and then also put one of those into it as well. So I'll leave that to you to do that, but you're just going to want to, mm -hmm. you know, bring that up. And you want it to go straight so it doesn't accidentally touch that, because if it touches that, then you'll end up grounding things out as well. Okay. We'll just grab the tip up here and push it through. It's going up through these two this way? Yes. Or this way? It will be going through these two holes. Okay. That's what joins the tip of the one to the switch of the other. And then the, but we don't want to solder that yet because we also need to make sure that one of those other 68K resistors ends up in that same location. This is a pain in the ass. Well, this is why I use the pliers, the tweezers, because you, I mean the pliers, you can bend that in a little bit and then kind of maneuver it. Okay, so now you should be able to kind of grab that and lift it upwards a little. Okay. But you don't want so that, to, want go that to go around. But I need that to not be touching that. Yep. So now you should be able to pull it up. Okay. That's as far as it's going to go. Okay, so fold it over. Once you're done soldering, what you can probably do is just gently with the your pliers, push that wire a little way so it's not too close to touching that and you should be okay. okay. Now you get those twisted two other ones that you did as well. Actually that, that did a pretty good job. Yep. Okay. So now take the twisted two 68Ks. Oh, I lost my screen. And we're doing this from the bottom. Okay. And one's gonna go. So you'll probably want them, yeah, facing down this way because once we flip it over, they'll be more accessible at the top. So one connects into there, the other connects into the tip, which is that one. Two, this one, and the other one comes up here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. So get the pliers and bend that over and make a nice tight connection. This one. Yep. And just kind of fold it off to the side. There you go. The other one, try and push through. It doesn't necessarily need to go through both holes because that one wire you've got goes through both holes, but at least it needs to go through one of the holes in the center of those with the same shared one as that one you just did with the one meg. As long as it now gets soldered in tight with those two, it's, it's going to be physically connected. All right. So now, so that's fine. You can even wait to solder that until you solder the other one if you want to, then, and then make sure it's nice and tight. But. Yeah. All right, so now let's turn the fan back on. Go ahead and solder in that center post for sure first. Right. Wiring these input jacks definitely took me quite a while, a lot of uh, time to figure out how to do it easily. Now it kind of comes quickly for me, but it definitely was a little harder. But they're not as hard as they seem. You just have to kind of carefully watch what you're doing.
I'm soldering all of this. All now. three, yeah. You're just so you're basically. Trying to make it any tighter? No, it's okay. You're, you've it. got two wires touching both things okay. with that one that you did. So as long as you solder both sides of that, they are physically connected. And where we just, should I just put the thing yeah, sure. from here? Yep. The you're nowhere near, uh, directly near any things at this point, so that should go a little easier this time. Yeah, push at the top because that looks flat gravity kind of fill it in for you. All right, that side's good. Now just hit the other side and. I'm not worried. All right. Oh, it's not filled the hole yet. And this is where you sometimes you have to really feed that solder in fast. Yeah. You'll almost be pushing it in until it fills the hole. Because the longer you hold the heat on, the more it will end up flowing away from the joint and then being in the bad, the bad location. All right. Well, that looks good. Actually, I think you actually have a bit, uh, kind of a puddle between those two points holding them together very well. So let's just let that cool now. If you want to, you can hit this other one. But you could also wait until it hardens a little, it's up to you, because that is a little bit harder to ac harder. access, and that way you don't accidentally. If you, here's a good tip that I've still, I think I mess up a lot. If you move a joint while it's hardening, cooling down and hardening, it will create micro fractures throughout, it's called a cold solder joint. Mm -hmm. And that's what causes that grayish color. If it's not shiny, it didn't get that. And so I still sometimes create those, and I, I think my bad vision makes it so that I don't notice it as easily, but um, you seem to be noticing them really well. So. Now get this guy. Oh, well, it looks kind of gray, but maybe not. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell from here. You okay. can. We can first resolder the other one, and then if you want to touch any of them up gently with the soldering iron, just enough to melt them and flow them, that would be fine. Well, this one's going to be a little tricky getting too. I would also try. Let me show the angle. Like more like this way, right. and come down from the top. And your photo. There you go. Good perfect. Okay. And now we're pretty much done with that one. We just want to trim up some of those excess leads. Go ahead and set that down now. I'll shut the fan off for a minute. So want, you want to kind of clean up any loose leads that are laying around? Is that the, the excess? Lead just means the wire that goes in and out of a component. Okay. Or wires in general. You'll hear the term leads or lead dress in two band building. Lead dress means making sure all your wires or leads are moved in ways that don't cause them to create noise by being too close to other wires. There are certain wires that we'll talk about, like the heater wires you have to watch that for. So leave, leave that alone now for a bit because that's where we're connecting our input okay. to. So now we can unscrew these on the back side, pull it out, and put it around the other direction. Okay. Also, if you guys know, we have this Let's downwards. Really oh, you can let it cool off for a minute if you want. So what we'll do is we'll put these sockets in. Let's go ahead and slide this out of the way. We can leave the, the heat on for a minute, but I'm going to turn it around. So that lead is down because when we turn it around, the lead will be up when it's inside. So, all right. So what we're going to do now is she's going to put in all these sockets. This is the rectifier, the power tube, and the preamp tube. So here they are. And you got your screws back underneath here as well for those. So how do you tell the difference of the different? So there are only two types of sockets you have right now, eight pin and a nine pin. The eight pin is both the power tube one and the rectifier one. Okay. And the nine pin is the preamp tube. That isn't always the case, but because there are some preamp tubes that will fit Does in those. Does it matter which way these go? It will matter somewhat um, because the way this works is this little notch is the, uh, I'm trying to think of the, what they call it, but it's to orient it. Uh, and on the left side of the notch here is pin one, and on the right side there is pin eight. So that's where it starts. So in our case, the way we wire up a rectifier is pins two, eight, and uh, four and six are the ones that are actually wired up to How something. How do you know where the numbers are? Um, I've just learned them over time. But they should be, I can't see because my vision's so bad. Sometimes they'll print them in some way here that you can see them visibly here. But if not, well, they all, there are pinout pictures. Try to come to this one so you can see right here. Okay. See that notch that I was talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you guys are following along the thing, you can actually have this. What notch? This is the notch that I just showed you on the inside oh, of this inner circle. Oh, there's the notch in the inner circle. And then one, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotcha. There's a the notch. So we, it sticks out right yes, there. we don't need um, a very specific layout in all cases, but you do want to think it through. So in this case, it'll go in like this some way. Okay. And since these holes are like that, you have to think, okay, so there's the notch. 
For the rectifier, it just uses the exact four, so it's not a big deal. Um, but on the power tube, you have to run some heaters, and the heaters on the power tube, if I remember, are... So here you can see on the picture of the power tube, pins two and seven are the heater. And the way they've kind of got it is they've got the notch kind of pointing, to, pointing towards the board. So in that situation, then, we probably want to put this guy here because that notch is somewhat downward towards the board. Okay. Uh, because that, the reason that is good is that pin one and eight go to the ground, which will be very close to it, and it'll be easier to just kind of pull that ground straight in right here. Uh, the, the heater wires two and seven will be kind of somewhere like this, and then we'll run those carefully uh, up and away from this output mm -hmm. thing because you don't want the heater wires too close, and we'll hook those into that as well. So I think the best way to do it is going to have this notch pointing downward, right. and then just do the second one the same way so that they're mirrored and look identical. Okay. So grab there's some screws under here. You just want the smallest screws and the smallest nuts. Do you want the screws on the outside or inside? Cause it uh, I usually have the screw head on the outside and the nut on the inside. I don't know if that's super important, but that's the way I think I've seen it as well in most cases. Maybe that's why they had women making the hey, hands. Smaller hands. They have smaller hands. Yeah, that's possible. All right, so now we want to really tighten this down. Not so anyone. I don't use the, so the, the, just as something for everybody to know, these are some uh, grooved tips on these, which are good for nuts and bolts because it holds them well. But for wire work, I'm using a different kind of pliers that have no grooves. They're flat surface. And the reason for that is that grooves can damage wire and wire can break later by the damage on the wire. So that's why I use those. So go ahead and use the, that's why I was giving you these as well. Oh, sorry. You're going to want to put that on the nut on the inside and then crank these down nice and tight. Oh, gotcha. Because we don't want them slipping or coming loose later. All right. Same up there. What are you doing? She's bugging poor Sherlock. Sherlock. We still are dog sitting and they're not best friends yet. No. <laughs> All right, All right, now let's repeat that process with the other two All socket. Right. And we wanted to have the notch going the same way? Yep, downward in that kind of downward direction. All right. Okay, so we just did the other one while I was swapping some cars off to start copying that over. So, now we just need to do the preamp socket and in general I also like to line it up the same way. You'll see the preamp socket has it doesn't have a notch, but what it does instead is it has a missing pin. Okay. So the missing pin the same way you'll want to kind of point it well downwards, but it looks like since this is let's look at the actual picture. Uh, the preamp one. It shows it shows it also downward. So as close as you can go to downward. Maybe this one. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So, so the right go ahead and. Yep. That's right. Go ahead and connect that guy in. All right. 